Hi guys, how's everybody doing? Uh, I'm doing good. It is currently 3.10 in the morning, 3.10 a.m. on Sunday, April 18th. And uh, tonight I have a lot on my mind that I want to talk about. And there's really no other way for me to like be able to sleep or feel calm or relaxed unless I talk about or like do something with the thoughts that are in my head and I'm too lazy right now to be any sort of creative person and like do a poem or write a song or film like some short film about how I'm feeling it's just much easier to like bear it all on camera get on camera film a YouTube video post it for the entire world potentially to see and uh Get my thoughts out there so today's gonna be one of those videos that are filmed on my iphone not on my canon eos r um it is going to be one of those raw uncut unedited videos that i actually kind of like to film because they really show like me and who i am and it doesn't like cut anything it doesn't cut my awkwardness or my stutters or my long winded rants about random things in life and it gives you guys, the people who like watch me, an insight into like who I truly am outside of YouTube or outside an ed edited video. And I think it's good. I think it's good for both of us to kind of see each other as we are. And so um, just kind of wanted to have a conversation with you guys about some thoughts that have kind of been recently manifesting in my head and some things that I'm slowly learning about myself since the last few weeks and kind of how I've like, I guess, I guess grown up over the course of the last 10 years, which is crazy to say that it's been 10 years since I started to like date. Um, so I guess I should start at the beginning. Um, ever since I was a, a small kid, I've always kind of been like the black sheep of like the family. And not just like my own family, like my mom, my dad, my older brother, my little brother and me, I was a black sheep. And I was also the black sheep in like my extended family, my cousins, my aunts, my uncles, everybody. I was a black sheep. I never really felt a part of my dad's side of the f of the family and I, I always felt like they didn't really like me um a lot of the times they didn't really take into consideration like me as a person um and that, that's kind of like the same problem that I have had and have with my older brother is that he kind of treated me the same way my entire like life which is why I find it so hard to like I guess develop a relationship with him now that I'm almost 30 years old it's like it hurts you know it hurts to f not feel loved or a part of like a family to feel like a part of your cousins and to feel like you are loved um and i think that's kind of where it all began that when i felt like any kind of ounce of like love from a guy or a relationship i didn't want to like lose that feeling of love so from age 16 to age 25 I jumped around from relationship to relationship to relationship in order to continue to feel like I mattered like like a person cared and loved me and in hindsight it was kind of toxic of me to do that to myself but I didn't know you know I didn't know that that's where it all came from that it stemmed from not feeling loved as a child by like my cousins and my aunts and uncles and my older brother and then in turn turning that into me 
wanting to feel loved in these toxic, manipulative relationships that I put myself in. And it wasn't until <clears throat> I turned 25 when my last relationship ended that life really threw a curveball at me. Like when I turned 25, I had my heart broken the worst that I have ever had my heart broken. And I tried so hard to get back out there and get another relationship and jump into another situation. And life just didn't let me. I was on Tinder, on Bumble, on OkCupid, on Plenty of Fish. I was on all the sites and I could not find a boyfriend. And up until this day, like four and a half years later after being single. Yeah, four and a half years later. Yeah, four and a half years later after being single, I still can't find a boyfriend. But there's a difference between why I couldn't find a boyfriend now and why I can't get a boyfriend today. And we'll get into those hopefully later if I remember. But um, for the first like two years, I was desperately trying to not feel alone and not feel lonely. And I would do a lot of stuff to not feel lonely. Um, I would go on dates with guys that really wouldn't go further than the first date. I would have like one night stands to just kind of feel affection or feel loved or feel I guess more so lusted over for however long we were together and it wasn't really healthy for me to do that because at the end of those encounters I felt like trash. I felt a little bit used but at the same time I was also doing the using to them i was we were both kind of using each other and it was kind of like this mutual understanding that like we're just gonna have sex and just gonna feel for a bit whether that's affection or orgasming or feeling good in a type of way we're both consenting adults and we're both gonna do this thing that we're not gonna get attached from and i never did i never got attached to any of my partners um i never i don't know i feel like after i had my heart broken i truly wasn't prepared to like be in another serious relationship oh. hold on y'all my foot's asleep <clears throat> but at the same time um i didn't want to feel alone and it probably took like a good two years to really like look at myself in the mirror and say to yourself Dennis what you're doing is not healthy yes sex is good sex is natural but you shouldn't be doing it this much with this many people so when I turned 27 years old I think is kind of really when like life started to like shift for me and I no longer felt lonely but I was still alone but I felt more happy and I felt more okay going out to do things on my own. Like go eat, go watch movies, go hiking, go to the mall. And just like do things that would necessarily kind of require another person. And I was out there just doing them on my own. And and it felt good. It felt, I felt happy that I, I could do things and not have to like think about how that person feels like is, is that person okay being here do they want to go do something else is there another thing they want to do do they are they annoyed having to be there and that's like i could go to the park for hours on end and just sit sit by a tree and just relax by myself and there wasn't anybody there who's like i'm bored i want to go let's go somewhere else and it was really really nice but I was still alone, but I didn't feel lonely. And that kind of went on for the next year. And then in March, the pandemic hit and everything locked down. There was protest. Um, everybody was trying to like fight for their lives essentially. and take care of themselves and their families and their kids and their husbands and their wives and I pretty much lost all of my friendships that I had 
because of the, the pandemic because you couldn't really go out and like hang out with anybody because you didn't know how bad the pandemic or how bad this COVID thing was. Um, so a lot of us were like, let's just keep our, you know, let's, let's not hang out for a bit. And just, that's kind of how it like went on up until we're still like over a year later and we're still fucking in this pandemic. But I had lost pretty much the only source of comfort I had in not feeling alone or not feeling lonely because I had friends to go out with at the bar to kind of fill up that like bar of like battery of like to kind of fill the social battery that I like needed and like I'm a very introverted person I, I don't really like to go out but there's times when i crave it and like i want to feel alive and in those instances i do go out with my friends to go to the bars and things like that so the pandemic hit and everything just like shut down all the bars all the restaurants movies and i was alone in my apartment in uh downtown phoenix and for the first time in like four years, no, for the first time in three years, I felt truly alone and truly lonely. And it sucked because I hadn't felt that f feeling of loneliness in years. And to have to like now feel it was depressing and I kind of like went through this whole anxiety depression episode where like I got fat as you can see um I was just kind of angry all the time I I'm still pissy all the time I'm still angry I'm still very like moody um that hasn't changed but there was a sort of like depression and anxiety that I couldn't really get out of it became hard to get out of bed and do things that were productive for my health and so in July of 2020 I decided to pack up my stuff and move to Long Beach with my at the time cousin well not at the time cousin she is my cousin but at the time we were super like close she was like my sister she was like my my best friend and she's the only person that I could really trust with how I felt. And she understood. And she was like, you know what, pack your stuff. I'll go pick you up. We'll go back to Cali and you could be in the apartment and we could, you know, start fresh. And that all just kind of, that all sounded amazing to me. And so I did. And for a bit, I was happy. You know, I was with my cousin. I didn't feel alone. I didn't feel lonely. I had, like, the beach, the grass, the sun right there across the street. And it just felt nice to feel a sense of normalcy again. But then after a while, I started to feel lonely again. And I started to, like realized that I was depending a lot on my cousin to not make me feel lonely. And I was kind of backtracking to those times where I was having sex with people in order to not feel alone. And my depression slowly started to come back and it just wasn't healthy for me and for us to be in that whole situation because honestly our whole friendship relationship whatever you want to call it has always kind of been a little toxic and i didn't really realize it until like a few weeks ago that like we were toxic to each other and like a lot of times we did stuff to each other that was like really petty and we were grown like in our late 20s acting petty as fuck and I feel like after I stopped talking to her, 
my life instantly like felt like it had a lighter air to it. It felt like there was this huge like weight lifted. And it was this like weird realization that like I have the power to not talk to people who are toxic, to not engage in conversations with people who that are toxic. And I've been very careful in choosing how I respond to people and who I respond to. And it's been working wonders for me. Um, and like, I, I just, I feel like in a lot of like Hispanic households, there's this idea that like, family is blood and who cares how they are that's your family that's your blood and we sh like shouldn't have that type of 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 like mentality where like you're exposing your energy to toxic people just because they're family and i've i'm like slowly learning to like take back control and to be like no you're a toxic person you're being toxic now and i don't want to be like around you like i'm very protective of my whole energy now and i have been for like the last year maybe but i'm like slowly getting more protective with but I guess my energy and who I, sh I and who I choose to share my time with because for me as an, as an introverted person it is very very exhausting to talk to people it is very exhausting to put yourself out there and you have to carefully pick and choose who you talk to how you talk to them if it's just a conversation if that's just like very like in a surface level, it's fine. Hey, you know, what's up? How are you? Oh, I just got a car. Oh, that's awesome. I'm gonna get a car too. Oh, cool. What color? Blah, 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 blah. If it's a very like that conversation, like I takes me no energy to like talk to people like that. But once you start to get into like problems and like toxicity, it like drains you and you have to like really pick and choose who you talk to and how you talk to them and how you answer and how you react and I've always been a very quick to like respond type of person I've always been like well if you want to fight let's fight you want to be petty I'll be petty too and I've learned from my dad which is odd because like he's he's a different story but like I've kind of like learned from him to just like kind of ignore people when they become toxic and just kind of like just just allow all that toxicity to just fall off your back and you look the other way and let them keep trying to throw all that toxicity at you and you just let it fall off your back and I'm like learning how to not react so quickly to people and it's been kind of like nice but that's not the point the point of all this is that because of this pandemic, because we all had to focus on ourselves and our own families and our own issues and our own lives, I really haven't talked to a lot of the friends that I had talked to in the past. You know, all those friends that I used to go out to the bars with or, or just go out with, I don't talk to any of them. I haven't talked to any of them in a year. Um, I think the only friend that I've talked to and that I've actually hung out with is my friend from high school and I've known him since I was like 13 and we have that type of like friendship where like we don't have to talk for like months and then like he'll call me up one day and be like hey um, I'm kind of having a little party at the house if you want to come through and we'll go like I'll go over there have fun have some drinks have a, a good time with them go back home and then I won't talk to them for like a, a couple more like months and it's it's we have that type of like friendship and it's it's nice 
and then I talked to one more person, <laughs> and that is my cousin uh, Victor. I I, I, I talked to him like at, at least maybe like twice a week, and what's interesting with him is that back when I was a kid, we like never got along, and we didn't get along for years, and I think once we kind of got older and we both experienced life a little, we kind of in a sense understood each other without having to say, I understand you now. And like two, three years ago, we kind of got connected again. And ever since then, we've kind of talked here and there. But for the last like year, we've been like talking a lot. And like, I've like, he's the only person that I talk to that I like bear my soul with like I'm 100% honest with him I talk to him about like my anxiety or, or or how depressed I am or how I feel so alone or how I feel so fucking like single and you know he tells me a bunch of his his problems too and it's nice because for the first time like I don't feel judged I don't feel embarrassed and with my when my ex cousin I would just call her that like I felt judged at times when I would tell her things and I'd be like, I feel so dumb for telling her these things and, and in turn kind of getting back like a little judgment from her. And with him, like I can tell him anything and he, I like, I, I see it in his face. He doesn't judge me. I don't judge him. And it's it's been like nice to have that like one person that I can count on and like kind of call like a best friend and feel like I can be open with him and <clears throat> it's interesting because like I said I besides him I haven't talked to anybody in like a year and at first it was hard because you know it, it felt like again being dropped from from a situation where I thought I was like loved and appreciated to now kind of being the black sheep all over again but the older that I get the more that I appreciate the people who I guess make an effort to be a part of your life and the people who you know hit you up and just to ask you how you are and just to talk to you and just to have a genuine conversation and I, I can count on this hand right here how many of those people I have in my life and right now there's only two and I can't bend down my thumb but if I could bend down my thumb you would you would know that it's only two and like I don't know I feel like the older that I get the more that I enjoy my alone time the more that I enjoy me myself and I and the least that I care about how I don't have friends or how I don't really talk to my cousin anymore or how I don't talk to my sister-in-law anymore and just kind of focus on how can I, as a self-independent human, keep keep growing and keep advancing in my, I guess, spirituality? How can I take all of these things that are happening and turn them into life lessons, which in turn will help me grow? And this pandemic kind of really put into perspective like the fact that it's it's literally not the end of the world to feel alone or to feel lonely you have to be uncomfortable in order to grow you have to get out of your comfort zone in order to become a different better person and it, it didn't really check in it didn't really register that this pandemic was teaching me how to be okay with being alone and being lonely and how I don't need, you know, all of the friends that 
I don't talk to anymore, how I don't need to have a relationship with every single person in my f family, how I don't need to keep toxic people in my life just because they're blood or because they're family. You have to accept them how they are. This pandemic has really just taught me like, protect your energy at all costs to grow and be uncomfortable and learn how to be alone, learn how to be lonely and that you're gonna feel these things your whole entire life. There's gonna be different parts of your whole life where you're gonna feel alone, where you're gonna feel lonely and depressed and anxious and like life, it's just like like a carnival ride. Life is just a huge roller coaster, a long roller coaster just goes up and down, up and down, up and down. You're gonna have your highs and you're gonna have your lows and this pandemic just really put into perspective like how I felt at the lowest of my lows and how uncomfortable I felt being alone and feeling lonely and how uncomfortable I felt feeling like the black sheep again and feeling like I had lost everything to now a year into the pandemic kind of re gaining the power that I lost when I was a teenager. And it's kind of been just like really hard to feel like I've lost myself, to feel like I'm not the same person that I was when I was 16 years old, to have had gone through all these heartbreaks and all these tribulations and, and these fucked up, fucked up situations back when I was a kid, feeling like a black, sh black sheep and trying to find some sort of like valid from friends and other people and relationships and jumping from relationship to toxic rela relationship to toxic relationship just to fe not feel alone just to feel loved just to feel appreciated just to end up feeling like shit for two years getting into rock bottom doing a lot of sketchy shit having sex with a lot of different people and just going down this like rock bottom hole that I just kept digging myself in to now kind of being my own therapist and realizing and analyzing where it all stemmed from, how it all kind of happened, how, how all of that transpired to who I was at 25 to 27 and how those two years really taught me how to grow from 27 to 29 and how now I'm going into my 30s. I'm gonna be 30 in four months, going into that feeling okay that I'm gonna feel alone sometimes, that I'm gonna feel lonely sometimes and that it's okay, you know? I'm finally okay being alone. I'm finally okay being lonely i'm finally okay not being in a relationship not having a boyfriend you know up until a few months ago i was still on tinder and bumble trying to find a boyfriend and as of right now i still am but it's not to find a relationship it's just kind of like the pandemic's just i'm i'm bored and i just want to talk to people sometimes and have conversations and i don't know just waste time and but i'm not on there to find a relationship which has kind of been like a nice change of pace from who i was 10 years ago five years ago you know it, it's crazy um how the older you get you really stop caring what other people think you really stop caring if you like lose people who are toxic if the, if the trash just takes itself out, you know? Um, but I don't know, I just, I, I kind of just felt, I feel like I'm evolving and I'm like kind of, I guess, growing. And it's weird to become your own therapist and go back to really fucked up parts of your life that you've kind of blocked out for like years decades even and to like analyze them with like a new perspective or kind of analyze them from like a different person's point of view like i'm now this 29 year old therapist and i'm here with my 16 year old 
like self and we're having a conversation and he's talking to me about how he, how he feels now but i'm in the future so like i don't feel the pain as hard as he does but i still understand how he feels and then i kind of analyze that and i think like okay so because of that i felt like i had to be in a relationship to feel some sort of valid and I hated feeling alone and feeling lonely because that's how I was made to feel when I was a child feeling like the black sheep of my, of my family so in turn I jumped from relationship to relationship in order to not feel that and then we get to being 27, 28, 29 and learning how to cope with all of those traumas and all of those issues and learning how to turn them into something positive and something that allows self-growth, um, I guess is the best way that I could put it. But my foot is like seriously numb and I'm tired. So I'm going to head to bed, but um, I hope you guys enjoyed this little talk, this little conversation. I know it was long. We're going on half an hour now, but... I just felt like it was really needed. Um, I just really like needed to get out of this, get it out of my head. Um, and if nobody watches this, it's perfectly fine. I'm totally okay with that. I don't expect anybody to watch this entire 32 minute monologue. This is mostly for me. But if you got something from it, like I hope you did. Um, I'm gonna go shower and then i'm gonna go to bed maybe or maybe go work out i don't know yet we'll see but um i hope you guys are having a good day and a good week and a good month and a good year and a good life and i will see you guys on the next one